Okay, welcome to another simple engineering snippet. In this instructional video, we will be using conservation of momentum with the Reynolds Transport Theorem to determine the horizontal and vertical support forces to hold this relief valve in place. Okay, so here's the situation is we have a relief valve located on top of the condensate pipe. Its lift pressure is 200 pounds per square inch gauge, and that results in a flow of 5,000 gallons per minute and the relief valve is relieving to atmosphere. And again, our goal is to determine the horizontal and vertical forces required to hold the relief valve in place, and we are going to be ignoring the weight of the valve and the water inside of the valve. Okay, so here are the provided dimensions and the angle of the outlet pipe. And here's our coordinate system that we've chosen. The gravity is in the minus y direction. Next, let's define our control volume, and our control volume is going to be the actual relief valve and all the water inside of it. Next, let's assume that the uh, horizontal force is acting in the positive x direction, and assume that the vertical support force, F sub y, is acting in the minus y direction. Again, those are the directions are assumptions, and our goal is to determine the magnitude of these forces and in doing so, if they come out to be a negative number, that means that we uh, assume they're in correct direction uh, for one or both of those forces. All right, well, let's denote the inlet to the reef valve as port alpha and the outlet as port bravo. And let's get into some preliminary calculations. The flow rate is provided 5,000 gallons per minute. Let's go ahead and convert that into cubic feet per second. And once we've done that, we can determine the velocity at alpha and bravo. Since we know the diameters, we do that, we get the values here. And now let's get into conservation of momentum. We will be using Reynolds Transport Theorem and steady state, and we're going to be breaking it down into the x direction and the y direction. They're both provided here. Uh, so the sum of the external forces in the x direction is equal to the integral of the control surface of the x component of the velocity times the density, times the dot product of the velocity vector and the unit normal outward vector. And a similar expression for the uh, y direction, the sum of the external y forces is equal to the y component of velocity, little v, times rho, times again the dot product of the velocity vector and the unit normal outward vector. All right, so let's go through this, starting with the x direction. And first, let's identify all the external forces all around our control volume we have atmospheric pressure uh, so there is no pressure force but we have assumed that the horizontal support force f sub x is acting in the positive y direction again that is a assumed direction if our value comes out to be negative that means it's acting in the minus x direction now let's work on the integral on the right hand side and so we need to integrate over the entire surface, but in reality, it's only the ports that cross the sur where we have flow crossing the surface. That's at alpha and bravo. So looking at the integral at surface alpha, uh, we look at the uh, x component of velocity at alpha, and, well, that's zero. So the first integral goes away. So we're left with working at the, uh, the integral of the surface of point bravo. Okay, well... The x component of velocity at Bravo uh, is in the positive x direction, and it's equal to the magnitude of the velocity times cosine 45. That's just from geometry and the previously determined uh, velocity at Bravo. And now let's look at the dot product. Velocity at Bravo dotted with the outward normal vector, and it is an outflow, and so they are in line with each other. And so that just returns the uh, magnitude of the velocity at Bravo. Okay, so we can uh, start putting all this together. And again, the first term is the velocity component in the x direction at Bravo. Then we have the density. And again, the dot product just returns the uh, magnitude of the velocity vector at Bravo. So putting that all together and then integrating over the area, that's just the uh, diameter as shown here. Going through, putting in units, and you'll notice that we uh, need to use uh, 1 over g sub c to get the units to work out. And when we do that, we get that the uh, integral is equal to uh, 1,934.5 pounds force. 
and that is a positive number and so when we put in the external forces in the x direction on the left hand side it tr turns out that we we assumed the correct direction and so the final answer is uh, 1934.5 in the positive x direction so that's it for the x direction now let's work in the y direction again starting off the same basic equation and let's uh, determine the external direction uh, forces in the y direction and again starting with f sub y which we've assumed to be acting in the minus y direction so that minus sign is just an assumption and well now we have a pressure at alpha we have atmospheric at bravo so that's essentially zero well that is results in a zero net force but at alpha we have 200 pounds per square inch gauge and so we have to include that it's always acting against the control volume so it's acting in the positive y direction and we can go ahead and solve for that and we get this equation which we will carry along that is the left hand side of this uh, Reynolds transport equation okay so once again we uh, break down our integrals into uh, the ports where we have flow alpha and bravo uh, looking at alpha well the y component of velocity at alpha is this time not zero like it was in the x direction and so we have to worry about that so let's work on that and at Bravo, uh, again, we have a, a non-zero component of velocity in the, uh, in the y direction. In fact, it's going to be in the negative y direction. And so, yeah, we're going to have to carry out both of these integrals. Okay, starting with the uh, integral at alpha, the y component of velocity at alpha, it's all going in the y direction, so it is just the magnitude of the velocity at alpha, pre previously determined. The dot product. Well, this is an inflow, so it's in the opposite direction of our outward normal vector, and so we get a minus sign, and again, its magnitude is equal to the magnitude of the velocity vector. So bringing that all together, similar like we did before, and integrating over the area, we return the flow area at alpha, and again, we need g sub c, so I am going through this rather quickly, but you can pause and check that the units are okay. And we get that the integral over alpha is equal to minus 1,215.1 pounds force. Okay, so now let's work on the integral at Bravo. And again, the velocity at Bravo magnitude is 127.6 feet. And well, let's work on the y component of velocity at Bravo. And this time it's minus 127.67 times sine 45 degrees. Again, this is from geometry, feet per second. And the dot product, again, it is an outflow, and so it returns a positive, so it's just a magnitude of the velocity vector at Bravo. All right, putting that all together, and again, we integrate over the area at Bravo, we return this, and again, we need g sub c, and we can bring that all together and we get minus 1934.5 pounds force, which looks eerily similar to uh, the uh, force that we obtained in the x direction off by a negative sign. And that is because the uh, y component of velocity at Bravo is in the minus direction. And it turns out that sine 45 is equal to cosine of 45. So uh, we get the same magnitude of the number. Okay. So let's repeat the information that we have and bring it all together. We get that the sum of the external forces is equal to minus F sub Y force due to the pressure, which is 5,653.4 pounds force. We can solve that for F sub Y and we get 8,803 pounds force. It is positive. That indicates that we assume the correct direction. So this is not acting in the positive y direction it's acting in the same direction that we assumed which is in the minus y direction so here's our final answer uh, the horizontal force is 1934.5 pounds force acting in the positive x direction and the vertical force is 8803 pounds force and is acting in the negative y direction and so that wraps up this answer i hope you found this useful if so then please like and subscribe thanks have a great day.